Our next speaker has featured already on a number of media platforms and is... Well, has two roles in the Heritage Party. She is our acting Essex coordinator and also our young adult spokesman who's going to speak to us today about the, uh, the future for young adults. Please welcome Eloise Schultz. <laughs> Hello. Um, as you've heard, I am Eloise Schultz. I am the Acting Essex Coordinator for the Heritage Party and I'm the Young Adult Spokesman. Um, outside of the party and my work, I'm a tutor. I teach children that are homeschooled. And I'd like to talk today about the future for young people. So young people are facing very challenging times. Uh, we've all had a rough few years, but it hits a little bit harder when we're trying to start our lives. So, for example, according to research published by the Resolution Foundation, one in six young adults live in poor quality housing. Anecdotally, a majority of young people don't expect to own a home by age 30, if at all. We are struggling for homes in our own country, and no wonder, given that immigration is hitting over 600,000 annually. How could we possibly build enough homes at this unsustainable rate? Young people are buckling under the financial and mental burden of the housing crisis. On top of this, we are bombarded every day with outright psychological sabotage. I apologise for these images. <laughs> On social media, selfishness is promoted under the name of self-care and self-love, and our British sense of community and hard work is breaking down. The rise in mental health awareness has been utterly hijacked Everything you do is a trauma response. Anyone you don't like is a narcissist and toxic, and everyone has PTSD. And the constant misuse of these concepts is disrespectful to people like vet veterans who fought for our country and domestic violence survivors. Plus, the culture being created takes away any sense of responsibility for our own actions and attitudes. And the only solution we're offered is to be more selfish. Now these lovely images are from popular music videos. These celebrities who should be artists and aspirational figures are pushing outright perversion. Media is supposed to entertain us and it's also supposed to inspire us and help us connect with who we want to be. Is this who we want to be? The majority of music comes from solo artists, which feeds the egotism and the selfishness. And the film industry is saturated with all these remakes and sequels, and we aren't being brought new ideas. So this is one of the main things that motivates me within the Heritage Party as we continue to promote UK independence. Because increasing our national sovereignty and independence will empower small British artists to bring out genuine work without being trampled by corrupt Hollywood production circles. The youth need to be given the freedom to consume and critically evaluate worthwhile media. Next, within education, young people are being let down massively. Universities are no longer respected institutions of higher learning. Many students only go for the experience, that being the social experience, and they're motivated by a desire to keep being sheltered by the education system. The university culture encourages the radical left, despite being a notorious modern day racket, setting up thousands of young people to enter the working world with a debt that is designed to be lifelong. The Heritage Party plans to re-implement the tripartite schooling system, which will streamline students into the appropriate pathways for their various skills, strengthening the workforce, improving quality of life, and improving Britain's self-sufficiency and skills. Universities and other businesses will adapt to demand. In school, kids should be allowed to be kids. This is me in June 2015 at Essex Pride. I was 14 years old and naturally impressionable. And at this event, I was surrounded by adults who even if they didn't realize it, were encouraging me to base my, sexual, my identity on some kind of sexuality. I'm 14 years old, sexuality, that is not right. <laughs> a 
and these pride events have only grown worse since then. The issue of equality in the sense of gay adults being tra treated with the same respect and rights as everyone else has been achieved and has since been overthrown. These events have been taken over by people coating themselves in latex, wearing actual dog collars and various leashes and harnesses, and behaving sexually in front of children. And these are all things I've seen with my own eyes. This actively creates more division, reinforces unpleasant stereotypes, and of course is drastically harmful when it happens in front of children and minors. We need the Heritage Party to protect children from this kind of grooming and sexualization. On this and many other issues, young voices are being overshadowed and oppressed by cancel culture and wokeism. I was recently disappointed to see one of my favorite businesses holding a queer night back in June. I said to the organizers, it's one thing to acknowledge Pride Month by reiterating that everyone is welcome, but holding these events that are implicitly exclusive will create division and make people feel unwelcome. When I told my friends how I felt, they all agreed with me, but they were shocked when I found out that I'd spoken to the organizers. They asked me, wait, you actually said that? And woke culture has become so intimidating that people, especially young people, have forgotten that our voices matter and we have the right to speak up. It's happening in universities, in schools, and on social media. And it's why I'm so grateful to have been given a platform from which I can hopefully lead by example and inspire more young people to speak up. And the Heritage Party in power will uphold our right to free speech. And finally, I want to talk about transgenderism. And again, I apologize for this upsetting image. No young person has a fully developed sense of self. No teen feels entirely comfortable in their body, and that's completely normal. Children and teenagers should be encouraged to accept themselves the way they are. And when they struggle to do so, they should not be sold irreversible hormone injections and surgery. Genuine body dysmorphia needs to be treated as a mental illness. When people with eating disorders experience body dysmorphia, we do not reinforce that, we treat it. We help them to create a healthy mindset relating to their body. And the same should apply to gender-based body dysmorphia. Our sense of identity should be able to take strong roots in whether we are male or female. Allowing the differences to contribute to one's sense of self is an important foundation being a woman is a huge part of my own identity. And I was lucky enough to have been supported in that, but some children are not. And in schools, they're being told that they can't take that for granted. You can't take one of the most basic building blocks of your identity for granted anymore. But a person with a strong sense of self is hard to manipulate, hard to control. That's why, from every angle, our identities are being eroded and attacked, especially in young people. Our gender identity through transgenderism, our voices through censorship, our professional identity through standardised and monetised education, our cultural identity through perverse media and mind-numbing social platforms, and our national identity through one world government and mass illegal immigration. The Heritage Party is the only real, serious option outside of mainstream political parties that will fight against these rising issues and brighten our future. My speech is entitled The Future for Young People and I can honestly say that the Heritage Party is the best chance for a future for young people. Yes. Thank you.